जाले सी जाले आनी गर मले फिरे कामाले जाले ली कंके आना Hello guys, welcome back to Oromo Time. This is our second episode. Today we've got starting from a right Ramadan, Jasmine, Talk to, Darafto, and Abdullah, and myself Ibrahim obviously. Um, yeah. In today's topic, the question is why do Oromos avoid each other in the UK? So there's obviously two parts to this. So we're going to start with the first one. So why why do we in the UK sort of not have some sort of cohesiveness, some sort of togetherness? Um, my opinion is uh, because everyone back home had more time. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. they were, everyone was together. Everyone knew each other. Everyone lived close. This that. But now here, there's different people, and there's jobs, nine to five. There's this and that. There's bills and everything. So no one's got time. I would say no one's avoiding each other. But it's just everyone got priorities. To be honest, I don't think it's about people avoiding each other. <clears throat> Mainly just like. The more the community grows, everyone drifts apart. Do you know what I mean? Like before, like everyone started coming here, like eight years, nine years ago, like everyone was so close together. Like we had so many activities, everything. Like we used to get together, but now I feel like there's so much, so many of us that everyone just like in their own little groups. Do you know what I mean? I don't feel like we're kind of like separate or you know, anything, but it's just everyone's doing their own thing. I think, to be honest, this uh, you know when you say Oromo, you know we're in the UK and Oromos, they come from different parts of the world you know we have Oromos that come from Kenya like myself I come from Yemen you know so there are people that come Karaba Harati Mila Tanimiti Jodeh Harati Tanimiti Jira Biyarra Sanifu Namni Hundi Anama Gafanin Duras Dura Dufay Warruma Gartin Wajin Dufay Wajinin Hagan Biyan Baratin Groupi Teko Khaisan Jira Tura you know like you're in a small group and then you get to know people you know what I mean and then you know what I mean it's just you're not try, you're not avoiding each other it's just that you chill with people that you're more comfortable with yeah. Yeah, you know and you have more yeah in so you have more in common but yeah. as you get to know each other as or almost you know what I mean now I think it's getting to be honest I think it's get, that is getting better now why do you think that because you know what I mean as as we see each other more often you know what I mean we get to know each other we ask each other you know what I mean question and then with Hajalu's death as well, protest yeah. together, you know what I mean? So that, these activities and things that happen within us just bring us closer and make us get to know each other more. Also, I feel like it has to do with age. Like, the older you get, the more you want to be around your own people, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. when we're younger, we just, like, we do whatever. But now that we're getting older, we want to, do you know what I mean, get into the get community and do yes. more stuff like that. I, think it's I feel like, you know what I hear a lot, yeah? I hear this thing. Um, us Oromos only come together when there's problems. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Obviously, Ramadan mentioned the child's death. Yeah. And you just keep hearing that. Why do we, why is it that we only come together? Why Why is it that it took child's death for for this like strong force that's going on right now? The like, Kero movement. Why do you feel that? Like to be honest, I don't think it's a tragedy, like, doesn't always bring us together. I feel like, like, 10 years ago, I don't know if any of you guys were here, in Bolton, and everyone was so close because we all just came to a new country like do you know what i mean and like we didn't know nothing else so everyone was close it, was, it had nothing to do with tragedy i feel like we were closer back then than we are now do you know what i mean we're getting to that point now but before i feel like we were so much closer than this like our, the community was so tight so i don't think it had nothing to do with her child's death or anything like do you know what i mean but, but, you know, i think we started uh, separately together with Kosumo, yeah, that's actually true. Because I feel like the more people came, the more everyone's finding their own tribes, do you know yeah. what I mean? So everyone's like, oh, I need to hang out with my own tribe. This, that, that. I feel like that's how everyone's separated. But before that, everyone's just like, oh, you're Oromo? Okay, let's be together. But I think it's because her child was loved. And yeah. everyone yeah. felt yeah. a loss and pain. Yeah. And they got together and then I feel like they realized, oh, you know what? Let's say, um, I see my... What I realized when I saw that force of movement is... Um, I was like, oh, I'm black in my Oromo community and I see these people coming together and this and that. You know, I loved it and I wanted to be more a part of it. That's why I feel like I started. Faith, that's the same with me personally. I feel like Achalu's death, death basically brought me close to my people because but before Achalu, I used to only chill with like, you know, yeah. <laughs> other, you know, types of people. But Achalu's death brought me his yeah, but what about, uh, let's talk about the Bolton community, come on. 
Like, uh, both in communities, you live in, you know, a bit everywhere, I'd say. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so the Bolton Oromo community right now, would you, would you say there's any progress? Uh, yes, right now, definitely, in 2020. But ah! back in the day, the, but the ones that are younger than us, I say that they're that getting we're worse. We're making progress, I believe. Yeah, we're but out. But the older generation, they're still stuck in the dark and doing more of the and stuff. Yeah. They can't let it go. But yeah. I feel like we're coming up, united, we can break that. Through. But what about the ones that are younger than us? What do you think they're doing with the kids younger? Do you know what I'm saying? How do you think they need it? Mm -hmm. I feel like they've completely forgotten about I don't think they, even know, they don't like, know nothing. Yeah, I, was I think that's what it is. I was saying this earlier on to you, innit? We might be the last generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. 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 yeah that's we, we, we actually might be the last back generation. Like, I feel like the younger yeah. generation is just a bit all over the place. They're lost. And I feel like that's that's where we come in, innit? That's where we like we have to take upon the responsibilities that our fathers took upon. Yeah. Like things like you, you lot know anything about Jasuna? You. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, Jasumas is, um, let's say beef happened between people. Then oh, you mean Manguto? Yeah. yeah. So basically, Manguto. 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 Yeah. So basically, <laughs> so basically oh, she's always got something to say in it. So basically, <laughs> in that situation, if anything's happened, the elders step in and control the situation. Do you get it? Mm. Um, so for us, that's, that's like our law. Do you get it? So I feel like in, in right now, our, our responsibility is upon us. Our, our responsibility is us looking after the younger generation and making sure they don't really go through what we went through. That they have someone that, someone older that they can relate to. Someone can look at the writer today and think, yeah, like she's Oromo and she's doing things. Now that makes me able to lead them. Do you get it? Yeah. I feel like at a young age, like all everyone that you look up to, is someone that's not around someone someone had said obviously yeah, as you grow older it comes back to your family and you start looking up to your dad and you start looking but before that you don't really have people around you that are older that such like such such and such person has has, has got an award or is graduated or is started his own business do you get it? and it's boomed do you get it? yeah but now when you grow older you actually everyone's got different idols exactly musician Maybe That's what I'm saying. Like us Oromos, we need to do better. Like we need to come out, be models, do. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Seriously, That's no. true. Like, we actually need to come out because, yeah, we need to be like models, singers, and like we already have singers and everything. But I mean, like do you know, we need to be really out there good. on social media, everything. Like do you know, like me, TikTok and that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, moving on, we need to be on the YouTube thing like we're doing right now. This is actually nice. Like what we're doing right now. Do you know what I mean? And we need to. Got photographers in the room. <laughs> so we need to make it big. That's what I'm saying. We need to be known like, <laughs> for good things. We are on people. To, I mean, we need to come out and, yeah, and I feel like do that's, great things. Yeah, one hundred percent. I feel like that's what we're doing in Bolton now. Like as much as we think we were better off years ago, I feel like that's because at that point in time we were new, and anything that was presented to us. Like we're just like, like we're young as well. We're excited. You get it? There's yeah. a football tournament. Oh yeah, we're going there definitely. Mm. You know? No matter how many miles it's away, you get it. But now you look at the Bolton Oromo community; it's actually progressing. You've got you've got about two mosques now, if not three. You've got how many shops? Just just in this market here, you've got about four Oromo shops. You got my people. Um, schools. We need to start building our own schools, our own um, pharmacies, our own everything, to the point where we don't even meet English people. Do you get it? To the point where us speaking English is, is just weird. Do you get it? <laughs> Alright, it's taking a bit <laughs> too far, man. It's like school and pharmacy. Yeah, okay. that's oh. not deep. No, in the future, yeah, we will, but in you know what I mean? That's not bad, bro. About the pharmacies? Yeah, what do you mean? Like, pharmacy? You mean, like, as we need it? Yeah, you can own your own pharmacy. Bro, just on Derby Street, you know how many Asian pharmacies there are? That's true. About six, seven. It's filled with Asians, do you know what I mean? They've been here for years, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm not saying we should compare, but I'm saying there's a difference between integration and you having your own thing. Yeah. So integration is more like you shopping from, like, bro, there's certain communities in Bond that have been here for long and they've not made one step. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? We, we're making a big step into starting our own things so that our kids can go to our schools being taught what we want. Do you get it? When someone gets sick, he meets... Uh, an aroma doctor and he can talk to him about every, every single pain he's got how many times has your mom or dad needed a translator for something that you couldn't even translate bro yeah 
no integration us owning our own things everything belonging to us like our shops our supermarkets you get it? they they sell our stuff our products mature everything being sold in our supermarkets but even that supermarket there white people are still coming to it do you get it asian people are still coming to it they're mm. buying from it do you get it so we're still sort of giving back to the community here but it's it's something that belongs to us if that makes sense facts yeah and i also think it's because our people especially our parents they always it's always problems happening back home you know what i mean mm -hmm. our people are more focused to fighting for their freedom and you know what I mean for their freedom rather than you know what I mean being you know what I mean focusing on their future you know what I mean now what you're talking about is you know what I mean what we need to have in the future you know these Asians and you know what I mean they've been here for a generation this is what the great granddads thought about you know what I mean yeah. this is for us this is our first we are the first generation yeah. like to properly speak English and get to know the culture and everything you know what I mean so I think us literally talking about you know what i mean what we could have and what we should have in the future it's a progress in my opinion mm -hmm. because our parents they they their jobs were to you know what i mean Bring us here. go away from where they you know what i mean where they fought of the oppression and brought us here and they went through hell you know what i mean teaching us the language taking us to schools you know what i mean it's, i think it's this is our time now to really look at you know what i mean how can we improve our life and the life of our own more children in the future, in the UK, you know what I mean, and everywhere else awesome. as well. With everything that's going on right now, I feel like it has to end within us. You get it? No. Who, who said it? I think it was Wako Gutu or something. He said, The woman is done with it now. The man is done with it now. The man is done with it I feel like the man is done with it now. You get it? So basically, what, what that means is, um, uh, if we can't yeah. break it, our uh, kids are gonna break that curse. Yeah. No, we're no, gonna try we're gonna break. add more people. Like, we're more gonna try to break it, but if we can't, our we're kids. gonna raise our kids through it, so yeah. that our kids Is it can raise can bring more kids into it. Like, no. Basically, the group my double connection, we're gonna take the what do you call it? Break it. We're gonna take slavery. The slavery from its roots. Oppression. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. oppression from its roots. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that means it doesn't exist no more in Oromo. Yeah. Or if we can't do that, we're gonna raise our kids. To do that. So and them I, kids right now, that's us. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. So this whole Oromia not being independent and everything, it has to end with us. Yeah. You get it? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want my kids to be to be thinking, you get it? Like, or confused. Confused or going through some sort of, of oppression. Mm. You get it? That has to end with us. Whatever we face, whatever our parents face, our parents worked a lot to get us here. You get it? Mm. They, yeah. they went through hell and back. These men were walking through how many countries, fought how many battles. And then we're here now. We're living the good life. So now it's our, it's it's upon us to sort of give our kids and everyone else a good life for them to be living from now on. For them to be stress free. Yeah. We've seen what freedom is, man. We've seen what, what it feels like. Yeah. yeah. But what do you think it takes for us to get there? Yeah. I say it's consistency and uh, not forgetting what the goal is. You know what I'm saying? Because. Our parents, like we said, there used to be a, a strong sense of community when in 2008 around that time. Yeah. That's because they came with the mentality of together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When they came here, but then they realized how life is here yeah. and how hard it is. And they're thinking it was, would be much easier, but it ain't. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's why they are a bit separated. Yeah. But now, I feel like us, we know the system a bit more. So with us, it's going to be a much easier journey yeah. 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 yeah i feel like it's only going to be easier from like it's going to be easier for our kids yeah. but again you just want to be the one that sort of ends it here do you get it mm -hmm. i feel like bro if in the next 10 years it's gonna come it's yeah. Yeah. especially especially in bolton i think the asian is the asian community is already like 
set the pitch for us. Yeah. To be like, honest, I'm like not private lie. rentals, houses. Imagine. Yeah. I'm paying my rent to and think what you can say. Like, imagine if uh, Oromo people started buying houses and renting an hour. And yeah, that, that's that's gonna happen huge. in the future, definitely. That's, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think people already start doing that now. Because <laughs> the Asian community, they have to deal with the racism. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why Ibi mentioned, like Ibi mentioned before. You know, I think that, that's why they in most of the hospitals and you know what I mean pharmacies. I think if Oromos, you know what I mean, really go on the steps that, you know what I mean, learn the system just the same way they learnt it. I think we can progress much faster than how they actually got there, you know? Yeah. When the route is set out there for you, it's much easier than, you know what I mean, starting from scratch. I don't really think us, our, our generation, Oromo right now, we are starting from scratch, really. We just need to work hard. I remember those ones, you know? I think I went to save my life in the UK test, didn't I? So the guy, the guy that's there now, I've been through that one. The guy, the guy that's there now, is the administrator basically, yeah? He goes, I hate you people. He didn't really say it that way, but it was along, along them sides. So I'm thinking, well, what's my man on? And then he tells me, you, you lot, you had it easy because of what we went through for you. Did you get it? Was this said, an Asian guy? Yeah, it was an Asian guy oh, okay. from Pakistan or India. He goes, what we went through for you lot, yeah? He goes, when we came here, we had nothing. We had to fight every single obstacle. Do you get it? We had to break down walls for you lot to be where you are. For you lot to have mosques where you can practice your religion. For you lot to have um, different different schools that wear sort of majorities. And, do you get it? Because they were... What was it right for his sister? Hate you lot. Yeah, no, well, yeah. Why no, 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 no. It's just the you know, you know, Did he want us to go through it for him? No, it's, it's just the notion that we're blessed now. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. We're blessed and we don't really realize that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he used to tell us he hates Appreciation. Us. Yeah. Because yeah, at the end of the day, there's no problem with. Every single community has its own problems and they need its, their own solutions, isn't it? Like the West African community, the Nigerians, they probably they probably have their own problems. Mm. Yeah. Um, the Arab communities, they have their own problems that they need to do. We've got our own problems, do you get it? Mm -hmm. But there's nothing wrong with looking at how how certain communities dealt with their issues and they got to a stage where right now... Just look at, look at the government right now. Five of them. The government, five ministers are Asians, bro. Oh, yeah, definitely. Top ministers. Yeah, top ministers, top, so top ministers. Pan, Pingy, Rishi, Sunak, the other guy, the health guy. Most uh, half of them alien. How did they get there? Do you get? Because they don't get it. Just MP there. as well. The MP. Exactly. So top so top ministers that work with with the prime minister. So how did these men? Don't 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 get it twisted. These men, whatever they do, whatever they are, they're influencing their country as well. Yeah. Do you get? They're influencing their people here. The, f the more we get more people into every single department, the further we'll go as well. I mean, so that they have that smile on. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they're progressing, you know what I'm saying? Because she's making stuff easier. And plus they can't pick on that community. The government can't pick on the community. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh she's there to defend them. So I feel like we we're making like big progress, bro. We're making big changes. Yeah. But we can't slip up, man. I feel like this is our last shot. Do you get it? We can't have no one else that dies or something to happen. Do you get it? Yeah. I wouldn't say it's our last shot because, you know what I mean? You can always milk, milk your kids. Would, yeah. <laughs> you know? Success will come after a lot of failures, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So, you just need to understand, like, the path that we're going to go on is going to be hard, you know what I mean? There's going to be long. disagreements, it's going to be long. But we left the EU now, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This country can do whatever they want, bro. Yeah, but yeah, really, we, we, most of us, we're not from the EU. Yeah. We're, so we're from Kenya and Ethiopia. No, the reason like why is because refugees. the EU, they'd have to go through the EU to make a lot of changes sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I think, maybe not. Yeah, yeah. And the EU, I want to hear this. This is Mrs. Mrs. Friend, you friends. <laughs> How you get started? Now, coming back to the question why we avoid each other, like, I never wanted to be around Oromo kids because I grew up in a different area where there's no Oromo kids, so like, I just thought they're weirdos. Like, I wouldn't get along with them. Like, I literally got to the point I nearly forgot. I found Oromo and then I started hanging around with these lot <laughs> Hello. in college. And then they were like, oh, yeah, they started speaking Oromo and then I started listening to Oromo songs, you know what I mean? 
But like, I used to not even look at their direction. Like, yo, I don't, don't speak to. Why is that? Like, I don't know. I, just, I think I felt embarrassed about me being a role Not gonna lie, like, I didn't want to claim it. Yeah. But you thought as well, like, no one was on that vibe in the yes. same as you. I yeah. know what you mean. Because, yeah. like, they mainly spoke Swahili, so I was like, Swahili, you know what I mean? I grew up in Kenya, so I had that much time. Yeah, I, I felt like, a bit left out as well. When, when you felt came, embarrassed, is it what they did? Swahili, I was like, sometimes, yeah. Because, it's a lot, you know, our culture is just big and it's loud. So I was like, oh my god, that's embarrassing, don't do that. Type of stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She grew up in Southwood, didn't it? So it makes sense. Makes sense. Oh, that's a city centre. Yeah, so I was like a area. proper so racist white. area. You know, you yeah. actually used to live there for like a year, yeah. and we nearly got stabbed, guys. By the way, just to let you know, <laughs> yeah. it's not like that anymore, guys. No, we like, like actually nearly got stabbed because we were black and we were wearing hijab and stuff yeah. like that. So by it's who, a bit dangerous. By what? A white person. Like I couldn't even go to school. Like I couldn't even walk to school. My mom had to like take me to school. But now and they used to racist. shout at us in the car, like throw eggs, everything, guys. I we, we went through You've been through it. I've been through wow. it. The struggles. <laughs> <laughs> the South is like that, you know. We actually not anymore. The South is a dangerous place. It's dangerous. Well, back in the days. Yes. Back in the days. Like no, but I feel like they put all the racist people in one place in it, and South was the spot for all the racist. But well, Bolton used Suffolk. to be like that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Bolton. But yeah. some places are still like that. You've got okay. you've got a whole area that's full yeah. of EDL people. Yeah. yeah. Like so it's everywhere, I think. Yeah. 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 Going B- back to the you know, BLM movement. Yeah. When I when it came out, I had um, written, kids that I used to go to school with coming out the other side. Yeah, I'm thinking. Oh, you I went to school, school with you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I went to school with you. I played football with you every day. When they came protesting, yeah. remember? Yeah, I was shocked. Time. I was like, wow. And he's kicking him, black kids. I'm thinking, oh, what's going on? After that, lot in school. It's crazy, bro. Crazy. But going back to the question of uh, why Oromo kids like literally avoid each other, why we feel embarrassed about, you know what I mean? Our Oromo, Oromo, Martin, you know what I mean? And Mali Senegueta, especially Oromo. Be a biratelati, if Baraniga Temi teenager, I got a nitty, I got Ero, Eroma, Kanaganiti, really him bay to end you to end you the Atanamuma, Sahiba Drago, the Teti, said the Atan, you know what I mean? And in Len and Oromo, the proud Jetu, Akasija Chuda, Oromo, Oromo, Jiratu, you know what I mean? So Han, you can Akasiti, Bertamale, you can Jol, I think Joluma Rains and Namia Kasiga Temi or Muma Sati, proud in ten, Akabuda Tuni. Or Mummahe for the Chadian to sit the Giadian to see the Giamadian. Yeah, bro, that's. You see, thing is, yeah, <coughs> I think just like as our own people as well, we don't really keep ourselves like primary. We don't, we don't put ourselves first. Like, just also, yeah. We don't put ourselves first. first. Yeah, because yeah. I deep tech, I was just asking myself this question, yeah? How many people in this room can speak more than one language? Meaning, they can speak English, of course, but they speak Oromo and another language. So I speak on top of that, I speak about three others. You definitely speak Swahili on top of that, you definitely speak Somali, you definitely speak Arabic, yeah. you definitely sp- you spoke Turkish. Swahili, forgot, forgot about a bit, Swahili, Swahili, Dutch, do you get it? Now, I feel like with that, not, our Oromo has never been primary, do you get yeah. it? In a way, it's good that we're, we want to learn other languages, but let's sometimes it's not a good card. I don't think we're, we we're losing learn. that part. We were forced, I'd say, yeah. to survive. You know what I'm saying? She had to learn Dutch for school. I had to learn English for school. I had to learn Somali because to understand my mom. You yeah. yeah. had to learn. You know what I'm saying? I think we didn't want to Yeah, learn. but we didn't put our mom as a primary as a primary yeah, force. Yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. You can't really put it as a primary when you're a kid because you're not, most of the time, you're not with your parents, you know? Only your parents would speak to you in Oromo, you know? Mm-hmm. So most of the time you are outside playing or you're in school, you know what I mean? You'll probably be speaking to To be honest, Oromo. also it depends on what kind of area you live in because when I lived in Kenya, the area I lived in, it was mainly Oromo. That's why my soil is not good because every time I was yeah. away from school, it was, I'm around Oromo people and that's it, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it also depends on what area you yes, live in and who you hang out, your surroundings, do you know what I mean? So, I don't know, man. Just, 
on you know, if you wanna. Me personally, like even in Kenya, even though I speak Swahili, like my dad, he's always made sure that we spoke Oromo hmm. more than we spoke Swahili. I don't know if that's what your parents did, but my parents, they made sure, like for example, if I speak to them, if I speak Swahili, they don't respond to me until I speak in Oromo. When I was even younger, until I get it right in Oromo, they wouldn't respond to me. And that's how I learned. Well, someone said they got paid to speak Oromo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was yeah, that was me. <laughs> oh yeah? Well, pocket money every single oh. week. Yeah, because we started speaking English at home, innit? Like, because nursery, primary school. So my mom's like, if you if you speak Oromo in the house, I'll give you a pound. Come on, just a little a bit. A pound used to have... Used a pound back in the day was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah, now you can come out with one. Pound, one pound. <laughs> <laughs> Them uh, chips and... Uh, the the pound, 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 pound. Pound. <laughs> used to love, man, back in the day. Yeah, going back to the question again. Another reason why I think Oromos, like, avoid each other in the UK is because... You know when you if you if you come to the UK first you get to know each other you learn the language you know what I mean especially if you come at a young age you pick up the language very fast and then you start to you know what I mean be in a small smaller group and then just interact between yourselves you know what I mean and when Oromo especially like whatever Jole Baharan Luf Tetan Oga Haria Dufan Oromo Khaytouni Bekhan but some more. I can see tea, so what you have soon done then at the funny glyphs, so it's a cowan for a jump test silence. Yeah, that's right. A cowan at the Isani, what you have soon famous silence. Sanifo Atilian Akasmal Lalta, Sanumale, I think, or a mona comedianity, or a more well gracious and malleable in verses in there. Oh, sing my game. Sing my feeling. We don't want to go out of our social circle to make you feel comfortable enough. And they don't want to do the same. What did they have to talk to? Yeah, that's true. That's true. We don't want to make the first move, and they don't want to make the first move. That's true as well. So I think I think that's about to change as well. I'm not gonna lie. What you meant to do is, you know, I mean, when you see an a new Oromo come to the UK, you know, you need to introduce him to the community. I don't think it's ever gonna change. Oh. I feel like the way we're moving right now, I can't even imagine like literally. I don't think they want to mess with us and like I feel like we're okay with them now but they still have that beef with us, do you know what I mean? Like I feel like they do beef with you. Well beef No no I feel like they still have that they think we're gonna ruin their white or their girls. Yeah bro they bring them from back home and they say they look yo that's why you lot said we don't wanna okay. No, that's not why. That's not why. That's not why I don't think that is. Oh, so the problem is deeper. Yeah, the problem is right. because. Let's not go all right, let's wait. No, wait, wait, let's not go there next episode. Next, next episode. Yeah. Uh, Stay tuned, Come back, yeah. Next week. So, guys, do you think that's changed? I feel like it has changed a little bit since Hachalu's death. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. It changed but me definitely. I don't think it's changed. I feel like it's just us that have it's just to come the time closer. Being. But I feel like, do you know Rabara and Lufa, like, do you see them around us? Like, come on now. Not, really. Not that much, in it. I feel like they look down on us. I've talked to Bear of them. And they'll be like, oh, they don't know about their culture. They and they laugh at you when you speak a fan or I'm thinking, a fan or like, Sirra, Sirra, Sirra is up here, fam. Like, <laughs> come on. No, really. I think what Rabara and Lufa, what are both in Jerusalem? Because, you know, most of them, they're in London, you know what I mean? Yeah, and the ones in London, I, I think, in my opinion, they're doing well for themselves, you know what I mean? And oh, they're doing group. very well for the Oromo community, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if if we, you know what I mean, work together as one UK youth association or youth community, we can make a lot of differences, you know what I mean? We can make them, the new Oromos that will come in the future more comfortable, you know what I mean? Don't feel the way, the way us and them felt about each other, you know what I mean? We can change, literally we can change a lot of things, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm but willing the thing to make is, the first movement of any change, you know what I mean? But the yeah. thing is, guys, I feel like it's different for boys and then it's different for girls because I feel like most of the people that came, or like Bahar and Ufan, they're mostly guys, right? Yeah. And then they look down on girls that grew up here, they think like we're something we're not, do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's... What keeps us away from them? Like they're like Tun if goti, like my kind of body. I'm like relax and no one's trying to chat to you, fam. Like, do you know what I mean? It's one of them ones. And then you calm down beast. Yeah, 
So, um, I just want to focus on Hajalu's death and the severity on the whole community. What it kind of forced us to like wake up and smell the coffee, like you know, this is we have to get together, we have to unite yeah. here in the UK for us to help our people back home, too. So, why do you think that that's the case? He, he stood for Blisuma, he stood for Tokuma. That's what we saw when Hajalu died. Like, we're like, oh, Gosuma can at this nigga, Duma can at this nigga. We all came together as Oromo. That's what came first when he died. Do you know what I mean? And then I think we stood together and they were like, I think he started this movement. Like, yeah. we gotta finish it. The yeah. thing is also like, like, most of us didn't grow back home, like in Ethiopia and stuff. But the fact that Hajalu died, I feel like we all felt something in our hearts. Do you know what I mean? He like yeah, moved on. And I feel like that's what made us closer and just brought us together because we all felt the same thing in our hearts do you know what i mean like i was thinking like i don't even like i've not been back home i haven't seen the struggle or nothing but it still hurt me like do you know what i mean because seeing my mom like that i just felt like a bit do you know what i mean like, i don't know it's really what had always stood for to be yeah. honest yeah. Had yeah. literally he did not separate or almost into you know what i mean he yeah. wasn't in a particular group yeah. you know what i mean he, he was yeah, no, yeah. Duma, yeah. He, he stood for P he is pure yeah. oromo you know what yeah. i mean he, you know the love he has for oromo everyone here everyone young old they all we know well, we all know his music you know what i mean we, we all know how much means this guy means to oromo so i think killing hajalu was a poke to see you know what i mean whether his oromos are gonna react and I think we did show that, you know what I mean? Every single person that had a drip of Oromo blood in them felt something, you know what I mean, after Hajalu's death. So, so I think that's, that's what's, what brings Oromos together. After that, I think a lot of people made promises that, you know what I mean, I, I will give some time or some sacrifices, you know what I mean, to make difference in in my people, you know what I mean, in, in Oromoma, to be honest, what do you guys think? Yeah, Definitely. to be honest, like, before yeah. Hachalu, did any of you guys even think of back home or, like, how you want to change it or nothing like that? Yeah. To, for me, it was like, I didn't even think about back home, I was like, I don't even know what that is, do you know what I mean? I'm so focused on being here that I forgot about back home, but then when Hachalu's death came, it was just like, something hit me, I was like, nah, we need to change things around, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but I don't know, it brought bad ideas, like, yeah. now I'm hearing, let's, let's all, as a youth, go back home and just... For a, for a tour or something. I've not heard that one. Do you guys hear that? I've not heard that one. We're like, what? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. what's no, going coming soon, coming soon. This summer. Oh, it's a new idea. After, after lockdown, after oh, lockdown. Okay. Come take a trip. Basically, yeah. we're all going to go see, watch every single region. Oh, go, up, go, go, go. <laughs> go so around. Yeah. So you okay. want to basically see, see your land, you know what I mean? Yeah. You guys were the first ones to hear as well. You feel a bit special to me. Yeah, it's <laughs> Or maybe they're just telling you. Yeah, I think that was a good idea. I think it's... Yeah, actually, that's a good idea, Ibi. You know, we're talking about it for Kenya. No correlation here, but no, no, no. We were applying that for Kenya, so but like this to come up for Oromia, that's actually amazing. Yeah, like... That's lit, fam. Come on, host. I think if you want to be closer to your people more, if you want to have more love for Oromo, for Oromos and the Oromo people, I think you're going to have to see, you have to see your land, you have to see where you came from, where your roots yeah. came from, to be honest. You know what, there's certain things that the elders do that we've never really saw a picture. You hear your parents or the elders, my parents, them talking about how they want to invest in our country. Mm -hmm. You get it? Yeah. We never think of that. We, like, who's, who has ever thought of going back home, investing in some sort of business, ah, okay. building apartments? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. the usual one. I'm trying to open a pharmacy there, not here. Right. <laughs> okay, man. I like how you switched out. No, I'm building houses there, man. Right. You already started, yeah? I feel yeah. like, yeah, that's, that's something good that the elders are doing, that our parents are doing, that we can sort of look up to right. and, and do as well. Yeah. Don't think about it, yeah? Bolton, if we really want. Bolton can be ours. You know that? Bolton can be ours. Dean Road is our In a way, you could say Dean Road <laughs> half, half Somali, half yeah. ours. Do you get it? Do you get it? Mm. I feel like 
So working on, on your own country and then having some sort of things that you invest in here as well. Right? Yeah. That mix is needed. Actually, working on your own country, I feel like people from other tribes are already coming into our land, like into Oromia, and they're investing, they're taking our resources. Why can we not do that? Why can we not build it and own it ourselves? So I think our community right now, especially the Oromo youth, we need to come together, you know what I mean? Come together and do some sort of event. We have a lot of talent, talents, I'm not going to lie, you know what I mean? We know Shagoye, you know what I mean? Football, we've already come together in, in football as men, you know what I mean? But we need to do something that is like open and to yeah. everyone, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that we learn each other, you know what I mean? See what and we have in us, you know what I mean? forward to it every yeah. single year. Yeah, like a big event that we have yeah, every like year. Or should we do it every event. year? Or should we do it? Or can we like rent out a place where you can do it more regularly? Like for I don't example, think we, a I big don't, hall and do loads of different stuff in one hall. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to even rent the hall out. Like we can do small events like in summer in the park, you know, where we yeah. bring the youth. Barbecue, like, yeah, we like, like, do barbecue, yeah. we do different type of activities, yeah, games. Sports, even the younger generation yeah. can look up to it, you know. Don't think Bring the everyone close, here. not just us as well, I'm talking about all And guys, one thing as well, we need to appreciate that we have two big artists in the UK. Oh, yeah. You know yes. what I mean? We have Kadir um, Martu yeah. and we have uh, Shukri, Shukri Jamal. Jamal. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if we do an oh, event... Well, we got a couple, we got Lil Lisa. Yo, we, we have Lil Lisa. Yeah, Lil Lisa. Yo, Lisa. Yo, Lisa. Yo, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of talents coming up in the UK, so say right now, annually we do one big event you know what i mean involving everyone you know what i mean they do this for us but for that obviously we're gonna need practices and stuff you know what i mean so for the practice we can come together once a week you know what i mean so that once a week can actually if, if it turns out to be good you know what i mean people can bring you know what i mean their other or friends you know what i mean people can see each other there and when we do the event i think the event if we involve youngsters coming there as well they're gonna see it and if we do something good like that, I think they're going to look up to it. And the next time we want to do it, I think more people want to be involved. Yeah, I feel, I feel like we need, we need something weekly, monthly, yeah. every, yeah, like, every half term, like, and then yearly, yearly yeah. and then we just keep that flow going. So but if weekly, like, we can get these, um, so so far there is the Shigoi class, isn't it? Yeah. So we can get them done for weekly. Every month we can have a little barbecue or we come together. You get it? Yeah. And then annually we can have them trips where we go for. You get it? Like and these, these can go, yeah, yeah. And big, big events they can actually happen in Bolton. Where like, like we get shukri and congestion. Exactly. Home. Even work with other like African African communities. Yeah. Do you mm. get it? And we all come together, and everyone brings something to the table. But we're the ones that are hosting it. Do you get it? Bro, they actually used to do that back in the days, you know that? I think, I think someone, yeah, like I think that. someone said it before, like, we should, we can even start this, you know, we yeah. can start the African night and we can yeah. get other, other like, people to contribute. Yeah. Because yeah. Bolton's being, like, heavily, like, influenced by minor ethnicities. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So we can actually go to the point where we, we become the influence that's needed. Back to the point uh, about the events, I think our events should not only be held in person, but online as well, virtual. Get in contact with other communities, see how they progress, learn from them. That's do, true. Do you guys get what I'm trying to say? 100%. Yeah, yeah, so I feel like we should take it virtual as well, because it's easier for people to stay at home and stay in touch with each other, because we're almost not going to meet each day. We have other things they call commitments to attend to. So I feel like, we should start getting involved in that too. Even though we're doing already, but like we should be more active. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of opportunities in the UK, I'm not going to lie. Lots. But that we don't know about, you know? So our people, like Ibi mentioned before, like the Asian community is widely, you know what I mean, involved in literally everything. Even the, the government, the highest of the things that's going on in the UK. But our people, you know what I mean, I think we're very... Limited, you know, most most of the majority, ninety percent of our people there in Amazon. You know what I mean? It's because <laughs> come on, I'm, not gonna, I'm, not, gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. The reason, the reason that being that's that's not bad. You know what I mean? They wanna work, we wanna work. You know what I mean? But it's just that there's no literally guidance to every single no. goal. You know what I mean? You need to you need to show them that they can do other but things. Do, but do you think that our here yeah. are like? Once they see one thing, they all run to it. Like Amazon became a thing, everyone's there. But this warehouse opens, everyone's there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we never wanna. Do, do you know what everyone's hopping on now? Uh, Uber Eats. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> one person does one thing, oh. does, so, like smile.
every day. That's that's how thing. you that's progress. Thing, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. To yeah. No, but I feel like everyone should be. Doing it's a good thing and a bad thing, I'd say. Because if everyone's there, the no one else is going to be having no opportunity somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, but I think we can go back to the point of saying, you know what I mean? When people see opportunities that are better than their current situation, they want to run to it. Yeah. That's human nature. You want to do, yeah. you want to progress. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think we need, like, someone that, that literally can show our people the way they can get involved in things like Uber Eat and more things, more opportunities. Something that you can work on to become, you know what I mean? Whatever yeah. you want to become. I think there's more opportunities that we can think of in our life. We can mention uh, right Honestly, now. to be honest, like, right now the big thing is social media. We need to be active on that, do you know what I mean? We need to, we need to be up there with the social like, what media. what kind of social media? Pen, Instagram, Twitter. YouTube, Twitter, uh, everything. Let's, do you know, let's blow up, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right. But back to the topic that oh, everyone is following each other, I feel like A plus everyone, if you all directly came out with good opportunity or good idea, we wouldn't stand behind them, we just look at them like, oh, he's crazy. He's, he's not going to make it, he's in the UK, be realistic. So I feel like we're not supportive as a community. Yeah. Yeah. If you came up with a good idea, I wouldn't stand behind you. I'd like, let him go and get stuck there. True. So what you're saying is you, everyone needs to be like, having uh, each other's yeah. back, basically having each as other's back. As a force, back. like we need to support one person, we need to yeah. move for that Regardless, one person, yeah. yeah, to make it. And then we can make it. Like we shouldn't put each other down. down. But yeah. that's the thing though, in our nature, everyone's greedy. They all want that they want to make it, yeah, they don't want to make it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like we need to stop that. But that's just not with Oromos, that's with everyone, literally. Yeah, but we need to stop that. We need to do better, yeah. But someone needs to show us the way, in it. <laughs> Plus, I think, yeah. But when we say with someone, I, I don't think we should rely on someone. I'd say. We need to take that step. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's say right now, if we're waiting for that someone, it's going to take a long time. Do you know what I'm saying? We so let's say if e anyone is doing, let's say they're going to Amazon or this, and I'm like, okay, yeah, go get your opportunity, but I'm not going to run there. I'm going to go find somewhere else, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And like, and then if like I find anything that's big there, I will say, you stay there, I'll do something here or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, why would we all go into one place? When those of opportunities is there, yeah. you get me so. Yeah, right. I, I feel like we need to be everywhere, really. Yeah. We, need yeah. to be, we need to be doing everything. Yeah, we need to be everywhere, not in one like, place. Literally, you yeah. think about it now, yeah? Every single arm of business in Bolton is either two things it's either shop? a food shop yeah. or a barber shop. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So now, Clothes yeah, car, car washes now is what coming through, yeah? I feel like that needs to change. I think he'll be just we dropping his business ideas in here. No, not even. Not even. I'm, I'm talking, we need to be ever in terms of even social media. Bro, we need to have like influencers. Yeah. Okay. Like, Cheers for example, every that. single community has someone. Why yeah. do you think? Why do you think um, the Nigerian and SARS, SARS yeah, went, went viral? Viral because they have uh, Davido. Well, you even had uh, Rihanna that yeah. reposted it. If you ain't got someone like that in your community, there's everywhere social media. I don't think that's what it was. I would say it's because it was a trend. Do you know what I'm saying? Like Jamaican music and this and that. Everything Jamaican is a trend. We've done it before. That's what that's what it goes viral quickly. Yeah, but, yeah, but they, they made it a trend. Huh? They made it a trend. Yeah. Celebrity yeah. status is, yeah. you know, if, if they have some influence. Awesome, but let's but let's not forget a trend is forgotten. And you get me? You don't want it to be a trend. Yeah, but, oh, but would so would so your friend that's not Oromo want to repost any struggles that Oromos are going through? No, because it makes you feel bad. You ain't got no one that stands up for you. You get it. So you need you need them influencers in every single field, bro. Mm. You get it? we need to be everywhere, really. That's what I'm saying. Social media is a big thing, guys. Get on it. Yeah, we'll support teachers, you. We'll support nurses, you. Go doctors, follow our TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, that's it. That's finished. Yeah. Time's How do you up. End the video now. Do we just end it there? Halas. Do we do what's your favorite Orama artist and your song, so we can put that in? Because I don't have trivia questions. Yeah, I, know, I think I should do that. Uh, yeah. I don't mind. You better not yeah? be quiet. Yeah? And mind. we can put a clip in it. Mind. Why are you playing me like that? I'm going to have this to say. Wait, which one are you thinking? Don't worry. Are you start from this way? I'll do this, guys. I'll do this, guys. I'll do this, guys. So everyone here, what's your favourite artist, Oroma artist, and what's your favourite song from them? Where should we start from? We start from you. No, let's start from you. We start from Ramadan. Start from yeah, because I feel like they're actually trying to steal my. Do you know what I mean? Okay, basically, Honestly. as a, as I grew up, my favorite artist has always been Khadir Martu, and I'm very, very, literally, very proud and very grateful to oh, yeah. see him thank, thank come to the UK. You know what I mean? Sing his his songs with him. My favorite, my favorite song being uh, Iman. I like all of his songs. I'm not gonna lie. 
but at the moment my favorite tune that's going is uh, I listen to Hablul a lot. Hablul, yeah. Hey, how about for you, Ifra? Basically, my favorite artist is obviously Kamar. Everyone knows that's my uncle, like, do you know what I mean? So, shout out to Kamar Yusuf. We are here. But I'm gonna say Munir because that's my husband, too, like, do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, yeah, that's it, man. Okay, and then the song from the artist. So, Kamar, I'll say Oromia because it touches me every time I listen oh, to it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm connected to back home. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mine used to be Free for Free, but it has changed recently to Hajaru. And my favourite song is Waiyake Inna. You're going to have to explain that. Waiyake Inna, you're a teammate. Waiyake Inna. You don't have to explain it. Because I still don't have to explain it. That's why I said you need to explain it. Why is that your favourite song and artist? The way it says it, like, Waiyake Inna, you're a teammate. Worry, like, they don't understand it. I struggle. They don't understand I struggle. So, like, the way it explains in the song is just beautiful. Like, it touches me every time I listen to it. Allah, can you cut out that that bit when I said my husband because mum's going to be watching this no, I just no, that's mine. Then the guy's been done online. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Yeah, my my favorite artist is. Um, I've heard a lot of stories about this guy. Yeah, Ali Berra, isn't it? About oh, what he went through for us and everything. Um, I, I hear his legend. tunes here and there. He's a legend. Yes. So, so which song is your favorite? Um, I'll probably say the Shigoi one. What's it called? <laughs> the new one. The one he done with that. What is it called? Yeah, what is it called? Yeah, you don't want to tune with Yannick, thank you. There's another one that came out, you know? They are just choosing There's one next There's another one that just came out recently. Oh, yesterday. Yes, you know how did it come out? Yeah, he's out. Yeah, he's out. I'm pushing something. 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 Mine's Kadir Martu. That's my favorite song, you know. I'm in it, you know. I mean, what was the song? Suram Rajuli there? No, that's not the name. That's the name. Anyways, big up Kadir Martu. Mine is Abush. I used to listen to Abush. I don't know why his thing was different, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? He would be like the dances and everything. I don't know why. But right now, I would say Qadir Murtu because as I started to listen to him, and I came downstairs and he's having like uh, food with my mom, just saying, I'm thinking. <laughs> and when I see him and I saw all the views he gets, and like I'm listening to him, I'm like, wow, okay. And I started shaking his hand, and right now I'm listening to Qadir Murtu and Lupa Lupa. Hello, for me. Yeah. Okay, do you want to tune up? Guys, That's we've come it. to the final part of our um, episode for today. It was good having you lot. Like, share, and subscribe. See you for next time. Peace Make out. sure you come back next week. Aromatai! Aromatai! Aromatai!